and so forth. You see they try to tell us as part of the white supremacist narrative that those was the slave traders. Why would you put oh the oh who the, the, the family that owned that was the slaves that the family owned. Oh, um, so why would you pick who how would you pick one slave to be on your you know on your crest? Why would you do that? And the, that's the more prominent is that is that right. So now you have to go research the art. When you go over there, you will find they got giant statues of Moors eating babies, literally. They got statues of crocodilians coming out of sewer drains, snatching babies, literally. What's a crocodilian? Is that like a part human, part... Oh, that's yes, a, a reptile, hum, a reptile, reptilian, right. right? So what they was telling us is why they kicked them out, and they art. This is a custom that comes from um, the old Atlanteans is to put the public complaint in the public domain in the artwork, so that when it's being read in future generations, they'll know why these actions was taken. Well, that's why they said, you know, the 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 Bible or scripture talks about if these don't if these don't praise me, the very rocks will cry out. And I've kind of reinterpreted it as like if you don't tell the truth about the history, the rocks is going to be written. Anything written in stone is going to tell what you lied about. Right. So when we talk about written in stone, we talking hieroglyphics, we talking cuneiform, but more importantly, we talking what they call stellar relief or base relief, which is the writings on the pottery and the um paintings on the wall that's not hieroglyphic but scenery related mm -hmm. right so when we start looking they telling us stories those are the echoes from the past right so once you learn um how to read the signs and symbols of primordial man and it opens up in your subconscious you can read that <laughs> stuff like a book the hieroglyphics for um, certain melanated bloodlines actually look like animation when you hit what's called the uh, alpha state, altered consciousness. You don't have to read them. They'll perform in front of you like a cartoon. Oh, huh. wow, yeah. It's designed that way by the uh, Egyptian priests. So, um, wow, there are quite a few comments and questions. And we said we're going to do some Q&A. Um, I clicked on a few of them, but um, yeah, I'm going to need to see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to see if I can. Um... <laughs> he said that. Someone said. Well, you've said this so many times, but Sophia Day says, peace, Rod, who are the dirty Moors? The ones who don't want to see the righteous Moors win. The ones who inside the temple doing everything they can to undermine the good work so the righteous Moors is doing the work. They know who they is. The grand governing body know who all the dirty actors is. It's not a secret no more. They've done enough dirt to reveal their hand. They played too many hands, too long, sat at the table. Now it's time to pay the piper. Chief Malik Angel Bay coming to clean that shit up. That's his job. Ain't got nothing to do with me. But you can tell them by their actions. Anytime they see righteous moors moving in a positive direction, they try to tear them down. Because they didn't do it first. Hmm. Jealous-hearted, envious people always preaching the uh, enemy is some pale face but they the ones doing the dirt they the ones that when our child get mad say if I was you I'd shoot that nigga in his face and the mad child shoot that nigga in the face them the dirty motherfuckers we talking about keeping these cycles of oppression in our community by participating in these cycles in our community they look like us but they not us they don't love us like we love each other. 
They don't see us like we see each other. Some of them see us as food. Some see us as pets. Some see us as property. Don't matter what your skin color is, they don't see you as on a level and they superior to you in all aspects. Thank you. Well, here's another question from Dark God. The Dark God wants to know if you've heard anything about the Anunnaki's will land here on 12 8 22. Um, I haven't heard that specific date, but I do know they are boots on the ground. When you say boot, you mean already or? Yeah. Been boots on the ground for about two years now. They've been aiding in the continuity of government. This is why you need to read that FEMA document and you need to know what those executive orders is. That's the, um, chief's reclaiming the land using FEMA. FEMA was originally designed to take everything from us. So we had to take over FEMA in order for the transitional government under the state of emergency declared by Trump for it to fall in the hands of the organic people of the land. So we had to take FEMA over first. That's why they had to execute George Bush first. He had to get the fuck out the way because all of the paper deeds was traced to his fraud. Once you kill the holder of the fraud, you kill the whole fraud. Now you can step in and do something about it. See, he figures all the way back to at least the Kennedy assassination, right? Yeah, because yeah. he was using, a, um, his family was oil tycoons mm -hmm. on one side and bankers, and intelligence on the other side. So he was using his um, oil company as the front as an excuse to oversee the assassination of JFK at the orders of LBJ. That's not a secret no more. Files out. Right. right. But then he also, when he was, um, was he doing something with CIA? Then he was working with Obama's, well, Obama's stepfather was working with him. Obama was his asset. Obama, Clinton, all of the presidents up until Trump was one of his assets. Hillary was the last asset that he was trying to activate. That's right. activating Operation Evergreen under the garden plot of George Bush, the gardener. Now, what is the role of uh, why it... First of all, I want to know why he's still alive, but, you know, Kissinger, who seems like everybody has to go through him for something like he's almost like the, the Pope on this side, kissing the ring and getting, you know, getting marching orders or getting scared shitless when they, you know, when they come to office, they got to go see him who tells them what they can and cannot do. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's a he's a political handler. That motherfucker about 200 years old. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What is what is what's that about? How is he? What's okay? Well, he we got his, he got, he got his, the juice. He gets the juice without us saying what right. is he, right. he, get, he get in power or activated um because of his political um education, right? They use mm -hmm. him to run multiple White Houses. Yeah multiple senators and congressmen he was a personal handler he's part of something known as the lazarus group which is a bunch of old billionaires trying to find the fountain of youth okay and live forever they live forever so he's showing that right so far he's living forever <laughs> that motherfucker ain't gonna live forever here i don't care fuck if he leave but he ain't gonna live forever here <laughs> Let me i don't think he's human personally me neither you know he figures in the book that the the woman wrote called thanks for the memories and that she was trafficked at from infancy straight up to about i guess a, adulthood but when she was 12 in the book she talks about how he would he was her handler and at one point he was she was given over to bob hope which is why she named the book thanks for the memories but she also was sent to see jfk and she had thought they had trained her to have photographic memory so he pillow talked with her like he did with Marilyn and they would get when she they get her back after flying her there at 12 she'd be able to say everything back 
word for word. Word for word, whatever it was that he shared during their little, you know. So um, so Kennedy was supposed to do what Donald Trump doing. That's, why, had, that's why they killed him. So remember, he exposed, as he did the speech, um, exposing the deep state. It's called uh, separation of, um, no, freedom, freedom of the press and is one that he did in New York. And the other one is called the separation of church and state when the Catholic church tried to uh, use his Catholic religion to infiltrate the presidency and he wouldn't go for it. Hmm. Right? So he gave those two speeches, but people not listening to what he said. Hmm. But he told him back then we was under an actual attack and it encompasses all form of government, science, technology, right? He went through it all. Didn't Eisenhower do the same thing? Eisenhower's uh, exit speech was the warning on the military industrial complex. Right. Because they had signed the treaty with some malevolent graves. And the Melvin Grays demanded a certain amount of humans, humans for yeah. food annually, right? Because they was already trafficking children through the Catholic Church, they agreed to sign the contract to get military armaments from the Grays in exchange for humans for food. Wow. But he warned about the military industrial complex, which has mm -hmm. since been taken over by what's called Space Command. Not the Space Force, but Space Force, that's the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. So that was to, to combat the fact that there now I also hear um, stories or heard saw or heard reports that a lot of what we think that might be coming from outer space maybe coming from inner earth or out of the or um, well, they might the, coming up from under the sea as opposed to or even dimensionally coming through as opposed to what we used to think of outer space the pope used to get his orders from uh uh eight foot tall reptile lizard bitch that lived under the vatican what happened to it she got split with a soul splicer. So that was his, like his oracle. That was his, that was who he was representing. Now, I've seen pictures of the Vatican and there's like this sort of reptilian, like the background. Yeah, that's like a, um, like an auditorium. Like a cathedral. But it looks like a, a doggone reptile. overhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff would you have? How, why would you have something like that in a so-called church? Or so -called, if that was, I, I don't. That it. don't got it. Don't got nothing to do with no church shit. Well, no I know that's no that's spiritual that's shit. It's point kind of, It's all of those things is is conjures. The Pope represent the tongue of the serpent when he's speaking there. Mm -hmm. And the tongue of the serpent speak what they call double speak. Pale face speak with forked tongue. Mm -hmm. Pretending to be the one that's giving the orders, but you're giving the order from somebody else. You're just the middleman. You're speaking with forked tongue. What you're saying is not coming from you. It's being sent to you for me to get from somebody else. Who sent you? Mm. Wow, there's just so much um, that is is going on, and people are looking for direction or looking the, the ones that are waking up. Now, the folks that are still asleep, they're not looking for nobody. But if they if they're in the church, they're looking for Jesus to come back, you know, and and get them all out. Because I've seen so many things happen in the last two and a half years. I would think if he was coming, that would have been a good time. If it, what they think, you know, what we what been, has been taught and preached was true, a lot of them have missed that. What they think would be that rapture, where we hear that some what's called call a rapture is probably if it happens, it's going to be more like a capture. When you talked about the Grays having 
get been given um you know that permission to, to but really what the rapture is is when Enki and Ainana come back to get Enlil kids because Enlil can't come get him he's not allowed in the earth zone oh really he's been so banned they had to send the uncle and auntie to go get their kids and get them the fuck out of here that's what the rapture is the real deal <laughs> is them taking in little kids off world because they're not coming back here no more i don't give a fuck where they take them and what they do with them when they leave they can eat them boil them fry them frequency the motherfuckers tar and feather them they can have lynch parties whatever pick a nicks pick a nigga all that shit when they leave here, I don't care. I'm only concerned with the earthborn and the earth being reclaimed by the daughters of the earth, um, by the commands of the queen of heaven and earth, and the rest of them motherfuckers don't matter to me. So when they're taken off, off world, are we then going to go through a period of, of, of rebuilding and re, re, re just going back? Because a lot of things we've become accustomed to that we've been given and like i always joke and say the lord giveth and the lord taketh away the landlord giveth and the landlord taketh away so we're looking at empty store shelves and this out of stock here and that and these are things that you know we have become accustomed to becoming scarcer and scarcer so what will be the process to get the people back in a mindset out of a mindset of consumerism that we've been indoctrinated into and get back to, to to nature to basics to living clean living off well clean we'd have to we do have to clean the environment because the waters are dirty and the air is polluted the food is gmo and all that so how do we recover from all that you know mama earth mama gaia big mama has gone through and and still preserve ourselves well, one thing we're going to definitely have to reconnect with nature. We're going to have to go back to family farms. Um, it don't mean we won't have cities. We always had cities. But we was always going back to the farm to re replenish. And then we went back to the city. We didn't have grocery stores. People forget this. Mm -hmm. The reason we had grocery stores because we didn't want the food to be able to be used as a tool of control of the people. So the people all had farms that the family would send the uh, most difficult youth to in order for them to learn the discipline of being working on the farm, right? That's how we kept our children from going um, off the wrong path, right? Because we reorient them to a different lifestyle in the culture shock by the time they adjust to the new lifestyle then the old lifestyle doesn't have the pull and influence no more now they can learn something because the lifestyle wasn't compatible with their nature that's why they was not able to fit in in that lifestyle it's not compatible to their nature so when you go back to big mama house you being observed by the aunties most of them doulas that's trained in the child psychological development, they know where you're arrested in your development to help you get free. So we got to get back to that to tie back in the nature. Family banks is going to hold the wealth. Family farms is going to feed the family. And the hands on the farm is going to be the children that need to reorient and reconnect with the land. You can tell them because they don't like sitting in no rooms. They want to go outside. When the rest of the children want to play video games, they want to go sit in the sun. The, the city life not for them. And to make them stay there is to make them start to rebel. And when they rebel, they come out as errant youth behavior. We didn't forgot who we is. Because we know how to raise our children most effectively. And we got the experts to prove it. Dr. Nathan and Julia Hare, child psychologists. Mm -hmm. Dr. Amy C. And Wilson, master psychiatrist and psychologist. Wrote plenty of books on the psychological development 
of the black child and awaken a natural genius, right? Look up the, uh, the other Bush family where all of the children graduated from college in their early teens. We don't like to talk about that because the nerd, the original nerds, the original brainiacs came from Brainerd University, which was an indigenous school reopened by um, Felicia Rashad and Debbie Allen, right? So when they talk about nerds, they calling our intelligent children nerds. You got to remember that. We the lambda, lambda, lambda. Sacrificial lamb at the sacrificial lamb at the sacrificial lamb. We the black sheep, the ones who don't quite fit in. They say we weird, kind of quirky, right? Something wrong with that child. But he grow up being no more than all of the adults in the family put together. But if they don't ask him, he ain't gonna tell them shit. Right. But and if some of the most, truth, don't ask. Yes, yeah, some of the most intelligent among us are probably the, the ones, like you said, that might be written off as, as having issues. They don't have an interest in school because school is, you know, really, we know what it is. It, it, it's it's animal husbandry. It's, it's training, you know, children to, to follow directions and be robotic, so to speak. And it's, I call it board of education, B-O-R-E-D. Instead of the, you know, because the Board of Education wasn't even about, they didn't want to create scholars, erudite scholars. They wanted to create factory workers and farm workers. They don't need no more priests or lawyers or doctors. They didn't need that out of us. So that was it. And it, I don't believe the agenda has changed. As a matter of fact, when we see the way things seem to be going, you know, of late, the agenda that they are putting out for our, our schools and our children, exposing them to certain things. You know, I'm not going to say things that I don't want to get, but you know, certain um, different practices and making it commonplace and it's all right and bringing certain people with certain proclivities into the school to show how it's all right to be. That all of that stuff is a part of the agenda to um, destroy the family, um, destroy our reproductive you know, cycle by putting us, you know, together with, with what's the same as we are, which means there is no, um, you know, procreation and so forth. And they're working it into everything. Every, there's the commercials. There's every show. You can't look at anything. And, and the, the ones that especially target, say, the, say 13 and up, you can't look at a show without seeing that those things portrayed and it's 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 sickening that and the mixing I call you know the swirling is so much that we're seeing that to me has been it that is directed uh to getting us to be to amalgamate to be diluted and to be delusional well you know the reverse psychology is the only way they was able to get us to amalgamate because they didn't like us and we didn't like them. We was culturally incompatible. They was sulfur-based, we was carbon-based. But they needed a drop of blood in order to have the rights of ascension, right? So in order for them to get their drop of blood, they had to figure out a way to get us to amalgamate. Mm -hmm. So the only way you can make a guy do something is telling him what he can't do. Okay. You tell a guy what he can't do, that's exactly what the fuck he gonna do just to show you he can do it. Mm -hmm. Right, so in the, then it's like a challenge, but it's yeah. reverse psychology at its finest, and it works. It just works. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but, but once they get their one drop of blood, they're not the same no more. They got yeah. soul now. It was like once you go, you know, get <laughs> what they say. Yeah, once it's, you it's, it's, it's just it's look. So when you go back to the um, Sumerian tablets, they already knew that when they fucked up and created the birth defects with the sulfur, they already knew that the only way to clean it up is one drop of Anunnaki blood or a drop of blood of the earthborn. They can't leave because they from here, but they didn't have the rights of ascension. So they had to get a drop of blood in order for the birth defect to be overridden, overwrite the DNA. So in the midst of the deterioration of the DNA, 
they got to get a drop of blood in order to have the rites of ascension. This is all over esoteric material, right? But they don't never tell you what it's about. Now, getting that drop of blood would have to be a part of their DNA or not, not getting the blood, say, maybe ingesting it or doing it in a ritual, but you're talking about mixing and then having the, the, the seeds, the offspring, then begin to, you know, have... All you, do is you, you can do the basic math, right? All of those passing slaves after four or five generations of perpetual rape, right? Well, they weren't slaves. They was prisoners of war, first of all. The slave narrative was written to usurp the people of the land. But they was prisoners of war. And the wars, there's a 500 years to this day. So 500 years we've been in pro protracted warfare. One form or another, either using the conjure and spiritual warfare or flat out bombs and blood and guts warfare. All of it is being fought in this time frame. While they holding the POWs, the uh, the ones who own the plantation look like me and you. Hmm. But they got these other people that run it and they, they got to get their drop of blood any way they can get it. That's why I want, it's a cathedral in Europe. In this cathedral, they was allowed to spill a certain amount of blood. As long as this cup don't overflow with y'all bloodshed, y'all can do whatever it takes to get your drop of blood. But if you overrun this cup, it's over. So yeah, in that, they've been in keeping that track. Case, yeah, but in that case, that means when you say overrun this cup, are we talking literally, literally or figuratively? Because literally, it was they had a free reign of bloodshed. This was part of the Babylonian blood magic under Enlil. Was that also? The shedding of the blood, it reinforces the spell of Kingu, which is an artificially induced Kali Yuga of the gods, a sleep period. Was that also then a part of the, the arenas, the, 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 um, that they erected uh, what like with the with the uh, what do you call it the gladiators and the fighting in Coliseums. In the Coliseum. Those, those are blo those blood sports. Those were um, fought also to shed blood on the land, but they needed the people's. Was that loose? The energy, right? The loose. The, the energy was sucked up. Yeah. Right. So when the people in the audience smell the blood, it triggers endorphins in the brain that causes a certain pheromone to be released. And now you got thousands of people in the Coliseum smelling this blood going through this pheromone release. But I'm I'm told that they get sort of the same type of effect when you put people in a basketball or a football arena or soccer. When all those people get together and adrenaline is, is going and they're my team, your team, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it there's a release that is actually being extracted and utilized well it's definitely anytime you get a mass of people together there's energy that can be harnessed mm -hmm. right so whether it's a football game whether it's the coliseums of rome whether it's a soccer game in europe it doesn't matter as long as you can get large congregations of people to participate now, it's different now because we don't have as many what's called blood sports. The blood sports is, was Enlil's way to keep us in the stupor. Okay. Right? So now so, you have many, many ones like MMA matches and stuff like that. But in a sense, you know, blood's being shed in the midst of, of that. And that's, those, are, those are blood sports, would you say? Right. The, the, but the old blood sports was way bloodier. I mean, they were using swords and balls right. and chains and stuff like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. So the the bloodletting rituals is to our is to enforce the spell to sleep or amnesia. How about all of the the murders, the 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 drive bys and the gang wars and so forth was was that a part? Right. So that was to to keep us divided. That was part of divide and conquer. 
-hmm. keep us fighting each other, we won't never realize that we don't have to fight nobody. We just take our shit back. Because when you look at all that stuff at the root, poverty is the cause. Everybody mm -hmm. is fighting for a piece of something. Right? So... We